Okay, let's just, um, I'm just going to do this uh, recording as a post trade review going over the dollar yen trade I took, okay? Um, why I took it and everything, just in detail. So, mark another days. Now, this pair was a pair that was ranging hard, and every time it deviated away from Monday's range, it came back in, okay? And you can see that because all the other yen pairs, they were able allowed to trend, so the dollar yen was held within a range. And the euro trended, the cable trended, the Aussie dollar, New Zealand dollar. Whereas the dollar yen, it, don't, it did not really make any momentum to the upside, even with dollar strength. So that just tells you that they wanted to manipulate the yen pair so they could all move or trend. So we can use that information and look for stop rates uh, in this situation where we just played the upside of the range, back down to the downside, up and down, up and down. So the low of this range was 112.527. One twelve point five two seven. Then I'll build up to how. So I'm giving you the reasoning behind my trade idea, starting from the beginning. Okay, so EC Monday there, right? High, low. Every time he deviated away, look what happened. Back in. Okay. Tom deviated away. Back in. Yeah, and at this point yesterday, this is where I, I marked out the chart and I posted it and I said I was interested in um, lungs here, okay? But I, I didn't have uh, the confidence uh, at that time to enter it long, so I said I'll wait. I'll wait for lower time frame PA, PA, which is in the form of lower, higher lows and higher highs, okay? So it was pushing up, pushing up, pushing up and then I thought, okay, do you know what? This looks like it doesn't really want to retrace back down and the obvious area of... of the magnet, as you can see from the range, was this high and this low. So at the minimum target, every time it deviated above it, where did it go? Down to there. Every time it came down, it went there. So I was expecting that target, but that alone is not enough. I want more as a target, okay? So I also, what I did was mark out 50% of the range, of the Monday's range only, right? Now, I'm just going to mark this out with a level like this. The thin level so you can see the thin black line here is the 50 percent so you can see how effective it is here don't you see it so it's like a pivot point okay now so i'm watching this when i take a trade it needs to be hinged off a higher time frame this is the key part it needs to be hinged off a higher time frame level and usually i want to take it most well 99 percent of the time i want to take it within the session time because that's when the volume is in the market, that's when it's most likely to move. Yes, it can move outside the session times every now and again, but the probability isn't high. So, come Asia session, I've seen it here, and it's, it's, it's hanging around. If you look on the H1, it's hanging about the 50% of that range. So, at this point, let me ask you, right? After what you've seen from here, right? Okay, let's go through it slowly so everybody understands this. We set the Monday high, Monday low. At this point, I don't know if it's going to range. But from what I can see from when it, when it got above Monday's high, which is a resistance level, it came back down, it took out Monday's low. When it took out Monday's low, it come back within the Monday's range. So is everyone with me so far how I'm using this? Every time it's deviating, the pattern is it's coming back within it, okay? We've also got a bullish dollar bias, so I'm only interested in taking longs here at this point. So when I'm taking the trade, I need something to take it off of, some support. So here, these down candles led to the move up right then this is a possible if i go back to a 30 minute this is a possible support level right going forward this could be a possible support level i need to wait and see if it holds or not at this point i don't know if it's gonna hold so i wait i wait for it it's come down now this is when i posted the chart i said okay i want to i want this to prove to me it's gonna hold so the way it starts to moving up like this i was i was in ideally i was looking for to get in lower but it did not give me that so we gotta go with what the market is giving me so then comes asia so i'm looking at this price moving up and i'm thinking to myself okay i normally when you see a price fast move up right we have a thin movement in price right thin you see the thin voids for example at this point here this was a thin movement down this candle here but then it gets filled in okay we didn't really get that here See how efficient this trading was? Up and down, up and down, up and down, grinding up. That's efficient trading. So, I said, okay, where could it possibly hinge off of? 
So I'm watching this. We've got this consolidation here. If I go to the five minute, right? We've got this consolidation here and we've got this 50% here. So I said, okay, if it's going to go off of this level, then I want, I want price to show me that. Okay. So I drew out 50% of this consolidation here. Mark this out here. Because after that, then it moved out of that range and used it as support. Okay. So if I mark this out, percent of it. Okay. This is why when I posted, I do not want to see a deviation of uh, or price move below 112.75. You look back on my Twitter, I said, I do not want to see price move below 112.75. Now, because this one, why did I say 1,000? 1,000.5 wasn't for this reason actually. Sorry. 1,000.5 was for a different reason. Let me delete that. I'll explain the 1,000.5 later because it's going to confuse you. Okay, so come Asia, this is when Asia starts, okay? This is the beginning of Asia. And we see, I want to see a stop rate and then I want to see a rally up. So if you look on the 15 minute, if I mark our Asia now, so time, we're bringing time together and our entry trigger together so i mean this is gmt time so i go for a for me asia starts at uh, midnight uk time okay so 2300 gmt is midnight uk time and i don't really and i probably the latest i'll probably take it is about one when it hits around two o'clock uk time i'm i'm asleep then so i'm not really interested but i want to get in within the first two hours okay so i'm just gonna mark out this so this is us pointing marking out exactly what time i want to enter at as well so i'm drawing out a window okay so if you look at some of my previous live trade examples you'll see me doing this okay you see these boxes it just psychologically just helps me see things better when i draw it out so asia is everyone with me so far okay so we're hinging this off of midpoint of this range We've come down, right, and we've pushed up off of the low end of the range. We're already expecting higher prices because we're expecting the other end of the range to be taken now. This was the target I was ideally reaching for, 113.20 uh, marked out. So we're bringing, up, we're bringing together the story of why it should go up now. Also expecting a bullish dollar, okay? At this point, if you look at the dollar index, on the weekend review video I did, I said my target was what? If you look 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 back, it was this these highs here, right? At this point I hadn't taken it, so I was expecting a bullish dollar. So that lines up with my bullish dollar long. So I wanna see an entry. Now this is my entry, okay? If people are gonna ask me how I enter, I'm explaining it right now. So take note if you wanna know how I enter. It might not be for you, but this is how I enter. I wait for a stop rate first. This is one of my entries, obviously. So at this point, nothing's clear. You can enter here with a stop loss, with a wider stop loss, but I want to enter our market to give me an opportunity, which gives me a tight stop loss. So we've got this low here. It's come down. It's taken out this stop here. Okay. This low here. We can see that. Rallied up. This rally up for me is, I see that as a break in market structure. Okay. I see this as a breaking market structure. So any down candles now is going to be buying opportunities. So as soon as this closed, I entered uh, full on bearish. I entered long. I had my stop loss at 75, but I could have got away with a stop loss just below that. Okay. And there, so it proved to me it held and it pushed up. Okay. So come London open, this is the Monday's high. Okay. So minimum target is going to be this. Uh, when I saw weakness of it, I don't, although I've got a higher target in mind, right? Right price level, so if I'm 113.20, if you look back on my chart on Twitter, 113.20 was my target. Come London Open, I've seen resistance here. It's started to come off, so I said I collapsed it here. Another reason for collapsing was it's NFP. I do not want to hold it during NFP. Um, if it was any other week or any other day, I probably would have, I would have taken it long because it's come back down. Um... And it's coming to this here, this down candle here. So this would have been a long setup, but I don't take trades just ahead of, this is a move just ahead of NFP. I'm not gonna risk it. 
Eventually he did target, but that's hindsight, okay? The, the trade I took was here. My payoff was 2.2R, but with a tighter stop, it would have been over 3R. But I was more comfortable using a stop loss just there, uh, below this consolidation at the time, okay? Is that, does that make sense? Does everyone understand that? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the recording and whoever's got questions will take that.